Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. She enters the ring wearing black trunks with white trim. She rated at 55 kgs even. She hails from Budapest, Hungary. She has 11 professional fights with 10 wins, one loss, five big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing Adina DNA Kish. And her opponent fighting out of the blue corner enters the ring wearing sequins with pink uh, stripes. She weighed in at 55.6 kgs. She has from Queensland, Australia. She's a three time world champion and the reigning and defending WBC uh, women's silver super bantamweight champion. She has 18 professional fights with 13 wins, four losses, one draw. Seven big wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Shotgun Shannon! Malcolm Bolnick calls them in. Clean fight. You had the instructions in your dressing room. Obey my instructions at all time and practices at all time. Go back to your corners. Come out, fight, get the belt. May the best one win. Good luck. Shake hands now. This is for the WBC Silver Super Bantamweight Championship, sponsored by Madison Sports. Ten rounds. These are two-minute rounds, so they'll seem fast, and they are. Shotgun O'Connell decked out in the silver and pink. And Adina Kish in the black with the white. Kish has been very busy. Nine and one this year. Two of the four losses that O'Connell has had. She fought in South Korea and South Africa. She's fought every place. And she is a real good fighter. Kali, you've seen her fight several times. Yeah, the shotgun, she's got nice balance. I like the way she uses her jab and she sort of looks for shots. But just at the start here, we can see that Kish knows her way around the ring also. You know, sometimes you see women's boxing and they, they're very, very, they rush. They rush and they try and do everything so fast. These girls here, I think Kish is the same as Jane. She takes her time, she looks for a jab. They have good balance, they have like, what you call ring smarts. Yeah, they're good athletes. Uh, O'Connell looks much stronger. Kish, 10 of her 11 pro fights have been in Hungary or Slovakia, so she's had the same class of opponents. The one time she ventured out of uh, there, she went to Puerto Rico and was totally overpowered by uh, uh, Amanda Serrano. But Serrano, one of the very best and world champions uh, there is in female fighting. And O'Connell, with her power punches, may be able to cause uh, uh, Kish some problems. Kish fights out of the gentlemen's uh, fight club in Budapest, Hungary. You know, you know, Colonel, we can see the shotgun here. She's always looking and she's got that fast touch on the defense. When the punch comes, she always seems to be ready for it. And she works the body well. She, I like the way she, you know, she uses her jab and she sizes up her opponent. A very, very thinking fighter. Oh, she moves well, she's got the good jab. Kish is fighting, uh, you know, I would say more desperately. She's already got a little knot by her right cheek, meaning that jab of Shannon uh, Shotgun O'Connell is getting through. She's from Slacks Creek in Queensland, Australia. 13-4-1 with seven knockouts, so she's more of a boxer. Well, she turned pro with a knockout win over Kelly O'Doherty in December 2011, and then won eight of her first nine pro fights. So that's pretty good stuff. As the bell ends round number one, I got to give that to O'Connell. Didn't I lose too much that shot earlier? No, sorry, I hurt you, my bad. Feeling alright? You're doing the right thing, but um. You know when you're waiting to come on, you're waiting too long and you step. Looking for the slip right. And you're, but you're, you're stepping into it, you're giving it, you're giving it, you're showing your, your hand, you know? You're, you're drawing on, drawing on, you're popping through from there. When you step forward, you're letting it know what's going to happen. Love, mate, you're good. You're good. Thank you, ladies, you're the Very even round. The shotgun got hit there with a nice right hand. You know, I think she just needs to get back on her jab, get back on her jab. Everything will calm. There's a little bit of. Pre hype nerves in the first round. No, no. Both ladies firing. Yeah, but you're right, Kali. The jab, if she goes back to a jab and again controls the distance, she should uh, be able to outbox uh, Adina from uh, everything I see so far. But we'll see because Adina's tough. She's a beautiful looking girl when she's got her head down. She looks like a, a movie star as opposed to a prize fighter. 
You know, I think if um, the shotgun can just get on that jab, like her corner was saying, be a little bit fast, but don't wait for too long, she will eventually suss Kish out and be able to break her down. But she can punch when she punches like that, and those punches will get in so much easier if she establishes a jab first. This is round two. Remember, this is scheduled for 10. They're two-minute rounds, so if they seem like they're zipping by fast, they are. A little bit squared up is Shannon. And she goes back to the jab. Kali, you wanted to stay right on that jab and control the distance, huh? Yeah, I think that, that'll be you know, more beneficial for her. And plus, I heard her coach say that as we went to their corner between the, after the first round, you know, they said, try and use that jab, don't wait too long. And I think he's exactly right. Now, she went with a right-hand lead that time because she's got very quick hands. But, you know, O'Connell is very clear-eyed. Kish is very Break, tough on the inside. Box. O'Connell needs a double-edged jab. You know, her first thought isn't the jab. You see, she waits and waits and waits and waits. You know, I think when she just starts using that jab a little bit more, because Kish will always come with that, you know, she'll always come with that nice, sharp counter punch. O'Connell has a seemingly some problem with her left eye. Looks like it's puffed up there. She might have a little slight cut there. I don't know whether it's from the heads and on the other hand, on the right eye, Kish is puffed up pretty good as well. So both have been nicked and they we're only in the second round, which is almost over. Two determined young ladies, Colonel, both good fighters. Start. That ends the second round. I got to go with O'Connell again. I thought she outboxed her, but not by much. Uh, you see uh, her handler, Zoltan Petrani, giving her the instructions. Only people in Hungary will know what he's saying, but uh, across the way to uh, Shannon. Luke Belden, the trainer. Nice combination there from the shotgun. Colonel, you can see that if she just gets busy on the jab, those those combination punches will come, I feel. And we can see, like I mentioned before, with Kish, she looks for that big counter punch after Shannon's um, combination. So that's why I'd like to see Shannon on the jab. You know, the other factor is Shannon O'Connell had 50 amateur fights and two world championships as an amateur. So she's got probably a better background than Adina Kish. So here we go as we move to round number three. O'Connell decked out in the silver and pink, and in the black and white trunks, the pink top is uh, Adina Kish from Hungary. I think this is when she looks her best, Colonel, when she's on the toes, a little bit jabbing. Looking when she can come in with a combination, because she likes coming in with those combination punches. Kish, on the other hand, she's waiting. She knows that Shannon's going to come in, and she's looking for those big counter punch shots. And she's, I must say, she's good at it. The supervisor from the WBC for this, uh, old friend uh, Bernie Balmer, who's on the commission down in Melbourne, Australia. One of the great guys in boxing. Sponsor for this one is Madison Sports. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan with Kali Meehan, and of course, our host is Ben Damon. Shannon's trying little tricks to get in, little, little movements. You know, the double jab, the, the feints will work a lot too because she's facing a counter puncher. So, just being the counter puncher, like we see there, it always works with the counter puncher, the double jabs and the feints. Yeah, that was good stuff. I mean, she got into it there, but, you know, everything was set up off the jab, uh, Kali, which is what we want to see her doing more of. Yeah, she's got beautiful movement, you know, the way she stands when they're off off each other, like before they get too close together. Her movement's nice, her bouncing, her swaying, her left to right dodging. And then she comes in with that jab, it's, it's nice, but she, I think, you know, I get the feeling she likes to come in with a one, two, three, with the three big shots. Shannon O'Connell is a mother of two. Her kids are here. I don't uh, think she has any problems disciplining her kids, does she? Rick! <laughs> Kish could offer a decent shot that time, but she doesn't put anything together, so I'm giving O'Connell these rounds. 
And I'm not doing that because I'm Irish. Holding up all right. <laughs> I think you'll have some said right, Chief. Yes, yeah. uh, you're starting to look away. You're starting to get your distance. That was a head crush, that got a punch. Yeah, that's right. She's starting to look away, but you're starting to, when you get in there, close. You're starting to get your distance right. You're not too far away it's now. Great condition. You're too far away. You're not huffing and puffing at all. You're seeing you're coming sure. in from too far. Snap that jab out like you're doing. Straight out, straight back. Make sure you bring it back. We can see here Keish is looking for the counter punch and she comes back with her counter punch is strong. O'Connell there having her way as O'Connell comes in, Keish bang, there's her counter punch. She waits, she waits for O'Connell to come in and then she tries to explode. So well, O'Connell will use the double jab, she'll be very effective. Well, Keish uh, is facing the second best fighter she's ever faced. Uh, Serrano uh, overpowered her totally and O'Connell is uh, beginning to break her down, but if you notice, Shannon O'Connell, much more disciplined fighter now. She picks it up. Kish has to hang on, but she's not able to handle his power. Shannon just starts with that jab and throws her power shot. She's all right because Kish is starting to throw desperation shots, dropping her chin down, putting her eyes down on the canvas. So all O'Connell has to do is just box it with the jab and then load up her shot. Mm, I think you're 100% right, Colonel. You know, put in a little bit of feints, a little bit of double. She's got a range now. She can stand out long, and she's having, you know, she's having her way when she does that. Yeah, I mean, this is a clear well, round where it shows that she's breaking Kish down because Kish is feeling some of this power to the body. And I, one thing I, I would say, O'Connell waits a little bit too much. She faints. She wants the perfect punch every time. Sometimes you just got to get the jab going. The other thing is she likes to throw the right hand lead, so she squares up her shoulders. You see, they're almost side by side, and she's not in position to land a double jab right hand. And that's why you see the right hand leads. I think, too, like what you just said, when she's a bit square on like this, she's not getting that power in her right hand because she hasn't got her, you know, one hand behind the other. They're very square on. But another thing I noticed, you know, you can usually tell, Colonel, you know this, when you find a counter puncher who's counter, you know, counter punching all night, all of a sudden they start leading, coming forward. It usually means the fight's not going their way and they're not comfortable, so they start swinging, coming forth. And I think that's what Keish is just starting to do Absolutely now. Absolutely right, Kali. She's, you know, you watch her folks that her eyes are down when she comes in. She throws desperation punches. She's wild with her shots. But again, other than uh, Serrano, she hasn't faced anybody of this boxing ability that O'Connell has. O'Connell holds this WBC uh, Silver Super Bantamweight Championship. It's a very, very good fighter. And they move Kish along fast. I mean, this is her uh, 11th professional fight in a year. And I don't have her winning any rounds yet. And that is when you back her up on the ropes now. She's putting her head down. So start when you get her there, don't throw wild ones, but start looking for that uppercut. Yeah, Bridget, Bridget with the um, jab, you know, okay, we're practicing the training. You get a couple of wild ones in. 30 seconds. Look at me. Get the jab, you can stop setting out. And always holding it. You know, I think O'Connell's starting to have her way in this fight. Uh, Colonel is just looking for those combinations. And like you said, she's in such great physical shape. Here we go to round number five. It's scheduled for 10. We're at the Chandler Theater at the Sleeman Sports Complex of Brisbane, Australia. That's Shannon O'Connell in the pink uh, trim with the silver sparkly trunks, white shoes, pink on them. And all the way from Budapest, Hungary is Adina Kish. You know, can I, I see the shotgun so far winning every round. You know, and I think she's also growing in confidence. Break, break, you know, oh, evident there. there, she's just leading with that big right hand. I think, I, I think she is very confident now. She knows she's ahead. And she's in such great physical shape, so she's going to try to land more of those combos in those right-hand leads. There's that overhand right that she loves to lead with. I'd still like to see her start with a jab more. She, I mean, she can go with a right-hand lead, but don't make it a habit every time. Because she's getting counter-punched by the right hand when she throws her right hand lead, unless she, you know, sinks it in deep, golly. You know, it's important, a lot of people don't realize how important and vital it is to stick to the game plan. 
you know, obviously the shotgun, Shana O'Connell, her game plan from her coach is to use your movement, jab, be first, we heard him say earlier, establish that jab, and then look for your combos. But when you get ahead in the fight, when you start growing in confidence, sometimes that goes out the window, you know, for a fight, and they just want to land that big bomb. It's very, very important. It's vital to stick to your game plan. I go back to what I've said uh, on occasion in boxing, Kali. The nature of the fighter is to want to fight. And who would know that better than you? You had a great career as a professional fighter. You know, sometimes a fighter gets hurt. He's got too much pride to hold on, you know, or, or even take a knee. It's just, like you said, it's the nature of the beast. It's just not in a fighter sometimes. And this woman, the shotgun, she is a fighter. Oh, yeah, for sure. She has a lot of natural ability. I'd like to see it do more with her jab, but she's Rick. sold on that right hand Rick, lead. Rick. She wants to plant that right hand. And she's won that round as well. Kish is not able to do much at all with her. But consequently, uh, Kish is behind in this thing. She needs to get her jab established, too. I don't know how she can turn this fight around now in the uh, last uh, five rounds of this fight. What you do when you drive the middle, you just put your head down and drive the right straight down the middle. And you'll get it. And you slip underneath that that took she's looking to catch her with. And if you do go to the body like that, you can't, you can't try to get out. You'll stay in there. Here's that right hand lead we talked about. She brings around like a little bit like a hook. And she had, you know, she had success two times in that yeah. round with it. Here's her finding the jab. I don't think Kish has the power to be a counter puncher and stop her. I, I really don't think she does. I, I agree with you 100%, Kali. She doesn't have the power. Uh, O'Connell from the very first round showed me more power from the get go. And again, for Adina Kish, this is the. It may be the best fighter or the, the second best fighter if you want to factor in uh, uh, Amanda Serrano from Puerto Rico, who is a reigning WBO uh, World Featherweight Championship. Uh, Serrano totally overpowered her. Right. We right. both know right. that's a right. big right. feat to go and fight in Puerto Rico. Keep your head oh, up. For sure. This is round number six. I think in this round, um, Colonel, we can see that Shannon's confident that that left hook at the end of the combination will land. So she throws the left, right, and the left hook. And when she throws that last left hook of the combination, she always looks confident with it, that one there. But she started with the jab that time. It was a good jab, which opened up the right hand. Now she can load Rick, up a bunch Rick, of punches. Rick, Rick. Tough girl fires her into the ropes. She's Box. tough. Sometimes, Colonel, that's the hardest thing. Like we mentioned before, you're ahead, everything is going your right. way. Sometimes you want to go off the game plan a little bit because it's showtime. You want to show everyone what you got and you're enjoying yourself in there. And I think Shannon's at the stage right now. She's enjoying herself. The fight's going her way. Look how confident she is there. She knows that she can do anything she wants with this girl to a certain extent. She still has to be careful, but she's just very confident and everything's going her way. Malcolm Bulmer, the uh, referee, just letting the two ladies uh, fight. Some nice left hand, right hand combination, uppercut on the end. And Kish is going to start to wilt soon because those are, uh, I would say, three or four heavy punches here in the sixth round. And if you just can't absorb it, is that, I see blood trickling from that nose. Uh, I guess not. I, it's, just, it's very, very red, the whole nose. That beautiful combination came off her defense. She made Kish miss. And then she made her pay. That, that old thing we always say in boxing, make them miss, make them pay. And that's exactly what she did. She absolutely did. That's another O'Connell round. I got a shout out so far. But for the life of me, Kali, I can't see anything that she can do to change this because, you know, O'Connell just a little bit. You're leaning in there. Those punches are starting to come together nice. Now, when you get them there, don't get too cute afterwards, all right? Make sure you keep your defense off afterwards. Look at that attack again. You have to be pulling back with hands down. There's that right, the, you know, the jab right and the left hook, and she just got it going backwards. Like I said, she's confident now. She's so confident, she makes a miss, and that's when that nice flurry came. She duck, ducked that, I think it was the left hand. She moved out the side. She's just having her way in this fight now. Totally. Easy. Can I try and punch too hard? No. Still, I mean, we're going to the seventh round now, and 
this girl looks a little bit gassed, and uh, O'Connell is not gassed at all. So here we go, but O'Connell hasn't Box. taken the punishment that Kish has. So here we are in round seven now. Yeah, the thing is, every time O'Connell lands a punch, it backs Kish up, and every time Kish lands a punch, O'Connell just comes back even harder. But Kish has not committed to a jab. She paused right, with a jab. Right. So she, she works inside and O'Connell blasts her to the body. She's done that on occasion and that and that's what she's doing, breaking Kish down. I like her little head movement when they're not engaging. You know the head movement she does now. She's never a still target and she never comes in usually with a straight head like a lot of a lot of fighters do. She always comes in off nice break, angles. Break, no punch, no it's punch. amazing the amount of time she goes with that no. right hand lead. I'm wondering if she was ever self-part one time or another. I think it's just that confidence. She's just so confident. The fight's going her way, so she just throws the right hand. And the puncher's coming back. Although Kish is a nice counter-puncher, I don't think the punches are hurting Shannon. Well, that's the thing. She doesn't have the power because most of the time, especially when the right hand lands, she doesn't have the strength to come back with a power shot to, to change it any. Neither fighter has been down. Nobody's been shaken. Kish has a, you know, a puffy right cheek, and I think there's a little slit by the uh, O'Connell's left eye, which happened back in the first round, but they've done a great job in the corner keeping that under control with the end swell. Got to say, Colonel Kish is a tough girl. She's right. taken some big shots in this fight. Right. O'Connell filled with confidence now. Checks over in her corner. And She's thinking right hand lead all the time, golly. Closing she, seconds now to this, the seventh round. He's got to throw one big right hand before the bell, and there it is. That ends the seventh, and that puts an exclamation point on it. As Carly said, one big right hand made to order. 76 degree in my score nine. sheet. This old man's in. Feeling good. Feeling good. Yeah. yeah a couple of left here. You know when you're throwing that right in, you're starting to get that right in, you need to drop down, drop your left rib in, but don't stand up for it. Drop it in, and you may have to step straight in after it. Keep that jab going, pump it out and back. Maybe even look to double it up a couple of times. I feel like I'm stuck with it. No. Yeah, good. Stay your legs. All right, everybody down. Away, yeah? Shannon, you know, uh, turned pro uh, to begin fighting for fitness following a netball injury. And she liked it so much, she decided to give up the netball and just go uh, stick with the boxing. And it's been very successful for her. So she's an all around athlete for sure. Here we go uh, to the eighth round of the scheduled 10 round affair, in which I have O'Connell with the uh, silver sparkly trunks and the pink trim. Uh, a perfect shutout so far. I've got it 70 63 after seven rounds. Yeah, I've got it winning every round, Colonel, but you know, I must say this Kish is very tough. Since she's a tough girl. She doesn't want to go away, that's for sure. But you know, if I'm her now, I gotta be thinking in the corner, you know, I'm way behind it. Just gotta start unleashing shots. And it, she couldn't make it exciting because she's let O'Connell get to a an area of total comfort. Yeah, I think you're right there, Colonel. But, you know, sometimes a lot of fighters haven't been taught how to throw these big punches. Do you know what I mean? They've been taught to jab and little right hand. And sometimes it astounds me that a lot of fighters don't even know how to throw a big bomb. And you need that in a fight. 100% you need it. See, there's a the, the jab and why it's not successful is because she's not driving off because she's not committed to a jab. But with the right hand, she's committed to that. She almost dropped Kish with a series of right hands. But she paused with her left and paused and uses it positioning instead of driving off the back foot and stepping up into the jab so it's successful. It's not a successful jab, but she sure has power in the right. She does, and I think she was trying to listen to her corner. Was saying, "Be a bit more busy with that jab, you know, like that. Just, just put it up to put it, and bang." She's trying to come in with the right hand, which I guess well, she'll have more, you know, success with that than just throwing that big right hand lead. 
this right hand lead two times in a row both the crash to the left side of the cheek of uh, Edina. Dina's face for all the punishment she's taken and not busted up and there's a uh, I don't know if that's blood from uh, the eye or the cheek but uh, there's a little blood in the cheekbone of O'Connell but I don't think it's her own. That one. That one was it. Okay. Okay. Pay attention to what's going on. And better and better rounds. That right hand's reaching more and more. Keep playing like you do. Keep your hand down when you're a fair distance away from it. You get that left hand up when you're in close. Because she's looking for that big shot and that's all she's got. It's a big shot. Nice shots there. You know, she's pouring with that jab, like you said, Colonel. And she gets it on the rope. She's just coming with that right hand body, you know, right hand to the body, and it's effective. It really is. Yeah, we're, not, we're certainly not criticizing because whatever she's doing and everything that we're describing is working perfectly for her. You can't do much better with no knockdowns than winning every single round of the fight. So she's out boxing her with her own style, with the right hand leads. She, if she improves her jab, she's going to be a really improved fighter. But for now, we can't worry about that because she's not changing the, on this night. And Adina, if she's going to have any success at all, she needs a knockout to win. She does. I mean, we've both got her winning every single round, but I don't think she has the power to pull a, a knockout. But she's very tough. She's taken a lot of shots. There's O'Connell showing that she has a jab when she commits to it. Yep, you're right. She's got a jab, and like I said, when she's off, when the, when they're not engaged, she looks good. She's got that nice balance and that nice movement. And she, you know, when she throws that jab off that movement, it's exceptional. See, she counted, did the counter punching there. Kish needs to just put her ears back and let the hands go, and Katie bar the door, see what happens. But she's not going to outbox O'Connell. She's tried that for eight rounds to no avail. O'Connell does have a little blood trickling from the nose now, so one of those jabs got through there. Again, neither fighter has been shaken, nobody down. Both fights nicked up a little bit. Both fighters. Yeah, this is good stuff now by uh, O'Connell. Really taking command. Yeah, she's just so confident, and everything she's throwing is landing. You know, the body shot, the head shot, the right hand lead, the left hook. So now she's nice and relaxed and calm. I think she's really listened to her corner, just getting back on the game plan and just trying to find that jab, trying to find that jab, knowing that the big shots will come off it. Off balance that time as uh, Kish pulled out. Up on the toes is O'Connell coming forward, goes with the right hand lead again, snaps the head of Kish. Kish sets up in front of her in the closing seconds. Now this is the ninth round. The blood trickles from the right nostril, but that doesn't mean anything because O'Connell totally outboxed her in the ninth round. So going to the tenth, it's a total shutout. 90 to 81 as we go to the tenth. This young lady, Adina Kish, come all the way here from Hungary. It's her second time fighting outside of her native area. First time wasn't successful, and this is a miracle finish. This don't want is it going to be Good kid shit taking these shots. It's a long night in the office for her, for her here tonight, Colonel. As we see that right just missing from the shotgun. But there's just so many punches coming at Kish. She's got she's got no answer. A little bit more work. You just knock the back like you did last time and jump on straight away. And look up and body shots and uppercuts. Now they want her to go with body shots and uppercuts. So they've been an any idea of uh, worrying about the jab for the remaining portion of this fight. Colonel Bob Sheridan with Callie Meehan and our host Ben Damon. Our principal Shannon O'Connell in the silver and pink, black and white trunks is Adina Kish from Hungary, who's taken a beating to this point, but nobody has been down and nobody has really been shaken. It was interesting, Colonel, uh, the shotgun's corner. A little bit more work, a little bit more work. I think they like what they're seeing, and you know, the fight's going their way. Everything she's, the shotgun is throwing is landing, and I think they just want to see her try and finish this fight. I'd like to see her go with the body shots and then come with an uppercut and see if she can catch her and drop this girl to 
more or less to make it the, a point, but it's it's definitive, the scoring. I mean, she won every single round of this fight. There's the body shot. She did exactly what her corner called for. That's the nice jab in the right hand behind Brent. it. You know, Kelly, when she Brent. throws the jab in right hand, it's, she's got a wide open shot. It's Must perfect, and she's got Box. that nice balance before she throws it. You know, and I think her, like I was saying, her corner, they know that she can just really put it on this girl, and that's what they want to see. But she's an athlete, there's no question about it. Box. Yeah, I, like the, I like the balance, I like the balance. She doesn't get off balance when she throws the big punches. Break. Netballers Break. would have to have great Under. balance. Uh, we don't have netball in Box. the United States, but I watch it a lot when I'm in Australia and New Zealand. And these uh, women have a lot of skills. A nice stiff jab that time. And I mean, she, look at the face of uh, Edina. You don't have to be Julio down by the school. You had to see who's winning this uh, backyard brawl. Exactly, but there's no quit in there, is there, Kuro? Nah, such a brave I, ad I admire fighters. Uh, uh, she's, she's come here and put on a good show, and she hasn't won around. Nothing has gone her way. She's done the best she can. It's just tough. But that, my friends, is a shutout. 100 to 90. I score in favor of O'Connell. So she will retain her WBC Silver Super Bantamweight Championship. And the girl from Slacks Creek in Queensland is going to be happy when the scoring comes down and she's a mother of two and those kids are going to be pretty happy speaking of kids kelly you get two boys that are fighting yeah i've got three boys uh two of them are fighting my youngest boy isaac carly Meehan, is hoping to get a fight tomorrow at the uh queensland state titles he's still in the amateurs right yeah he's 16 years of age and he's uh super big heavy. kid big kid and of course i know willis he's a great character i love the kid yeah, i thanks, hope he man. has a lot of success you know they're tough like mama <laughs> well we've seen a very very good fight here for the wbc silver super bantamweight championship it was lopsided but during the two minute rounds it was it was nice to watch we pointed out a lot of things that we thought Shannon should do, but and the bottom line is she did what she wanted to do, and she won every single round. So I don't think Kelly and I are too disappointed with the way she pulled this thing off. And this uh, Judy from Hungary beaten up a little bit. Dan Hennessy has the official particulars, so we'll go up to our ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this competition 100 to 90 for your winner by unanimous decision. And still, the WBC Female Silver Super Bantamweight Champion. 